what I've seen in the online entrepreneur space, the easiest way, like I said earlier, to make 10K, just flat out is probably agency. So the easiest way to become a millionaire, like an actual liquid cash millionaire, I've always said, and I will stick by this, is dropshipping brand to e-com brand. Easiest way, because it's, you get parabolic scale, you get exit value, and it's quick, man, it's quick. Like if something can do 10K a month dropshipping, it will end up doing 100 plus K a month with the e-com brand. Welcome back to the Beyond the Wealth podcast. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today I have Samir Mithwani, a drop shipping expert and one of the youngest people in the space and stay tuned for that because that's going to be a bomb that'll drop later on but brother thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for having me man dude i i had been introduced to your content pretty recently actually i see that you're starting to jump into socials but i wanted to lead off with a question that might be interesting to you and that is what does a gold jewel mean to you a gold jewel <laughs> oh you did some digging bro you yep. did some digging Gold Jewel is technically one of my first winning products. Yeah, I used to sell vapes to high schoolers. It stemmed from, uh, that stemmed into running brands now, what I do, but yeah, it means uh, the start of my journey. Dude, it's funny, I had my best friend also sold those colored jewels when yeah. that was a hustle, and I had not heard a peep about that till I did some research <laughs> on you, and then I was like, dude, what a memory this just <laughs> unlocked. But I remember when it was crazy, I, I had a blue jewel back then, and I was like, damn, this is cool. That's hilarious that that was kind of the start for you. Yeah. Um, but let's start early on in your journey. I know you mm. came from a middle class background. You weren't somebody who was father funded or had a ton of money. Mm -hmm. When did you start to get interested in business? Dude, it was uh, always a knack for me. And I've said this before. My dad owned a gas station. So he was a small business owner growing up. We didn't have a lot of money, but we had some money coming in from the gas station. So I would always see him work hard. I always knew that like there was a world outside or it's a traditional nine to five route. My first venture was actually selling Smarties. So I, I, I would get Smarties for, it costed me like, I think it was like 15, $20 to get the big pack. i will sell them two for one. I would make like off each pack, maybe like $15. But that was my first knack. And I've said it before. I love to say this. It was a love for turning $1 into two. You know, it was never, I would need to make money, I need to be rich. It was just like, I enjoy doing this. It was ever since I was like 12, 13. I've had so many conversations with people like you, and it is that like, the first time somebody paid me a dollar online for something I offered them, or the first time I bought something for 100 and sold it for 200 you get that rush of like, whoa, like, yeah. because it's the possibilities then become endless. You can go and exchange your time for money or your services for money, mm -hmm. but people that haven't done that just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. So you start selling Smarties, and I know you had tons of hustles as a kid. You were always doing stuff. I got into selling, uh, like, I got into this whole online world through sneakers, like I know you did as well. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's funny how shoes have brought so many people, but then they've branched off. You picked e-com. Like, why yeah. did e-com really attract you? That's a really good question, man. E-com made sense. And I've said this before to people where it's like, in today's day and age, there's so many business models you can choose. You can do an agency. You can have a media company. You can do this. You can do that. When I saw e-com, it just made sense to me. And I always tell people, pick what makes sense to you. To be able to sell products online, especially with dropshipping where you don't have inventory, it just made so much sense. It's like, yo, unlimited scalability, I can build a real brand, I can sell it. Like, all the boxes were clicking off. So I was like, all right, this is a perfect business model for me. And when you're going through and kind of evaluating, do I wanna go e com? Do I wanna stay selling like shoes and different things like that? what was really that driver like did you have any brands that you saw that were already doing it do you have anybody around you that was doing it was there somebody that inspired you to kind of get into that space that's a good question man i mean i saw ty lopez ads so i was like okay he's <laughs> making money online i can do it but i think no one in my circle or no one in my life had actually made money with e-commerce specifically it was a shot in the dark at the end of the day I would watch youtubers here and there there was one guy that's super low-key that I, I watched his name is dan voss so he did a lot of uh, Amazon marketing as well. So he was a really good guy I would watch, but no one in my life was really doing it. It was more so like, I think I can do it. I think I can be that person. And what was that first product that got you started? And it could be a failure, not the one that was your first big win, mm -hmm. but what was your first kind of stab at this online yeah, world? It's actually kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> it was a SpongeBob AirPod cases. <laughs> 
it was a Patrick and a SpongeBob like duo deal or whatever. I had a really can I, can I swear on this? Yeah, yeah. I had a Same really way. shitty Shopify store. <laughs> I didn't even like dude. It was like uh, grayed out images on the end. It was horrible. And I did meme page marketing. I, I reached out to some meme page on Instagram, like, hey, can I pay you guys $20 to post it? Yeah, okay, great. Posted it. No sales. Yeah, that was the first stab at e-com. That was the first stab. And then how long before you found that first winning product that showed you, like, dude, this is actually something? You know, it took around I, 30 products until I got that first, like, real winner. But in between those 30 products, there were products that made a little bit of sales, just weren't profitable, right? So... I, like that, the cha-chings were coming in, but they yeah. just weren't profitable. So it was yeah. like, I, I still get the dopamine, but then I check the ads. I'm like, oh, well, it's not profitable. But yeah, it was 30 products until I found my first real winner, which were electric fighters. And for people listening that are probably in the same position as you were before you found the electric lighter, what did you do to help yourself kind of get over that 29, 30 failures before mm -hmm. you then got that big winner because i would say most people would quit before oh, that yeah and to be honest looking back i'm like why didn't i quit because <laughs> i'm not like some outgoing super hard working person and i've said this online before too i'm just an average guy i just stuck with it for a bit longer than more, most people a big thing that helped me continuously fail and keep going was routine i truly believe if you can put product testing in your routine you will succeed same thing with like having an agency if you can put outreach in your routine you will succeed Routine is one of the most important parts of seeing success. It's like if you can implement something in your routine, you will win. Like for product testing, I would come home from school and I would just test products. It would just became a routine, like brushing my teeth, right? And eventually it started to work, you know, that it's just one plus one equals two. I put in the work, I did the right thing, and it worked. Routines are so popular now, and I like that you talk about it from the business perspective of like, hey, if you add these certain things into your routine from a business operator, you will see success. Mm -hmm. What is your actual routine like? Are you one of these people that's cold plunging at five in the morning, running eight miles before your first meeting? Like, what does your morning routine or your daily routine look like? You know, it's so out of, it's, it's all over the place because I do travel a lot. So the time zones are always changing. Yeah. You know, like I just got back from Europe. I was there for like two months and I was like, Europe, Dubai, China, like all over the place. So the time zones are always changing. I naturally fall nocturnal. It's very weird. I'll stay up till 7, 8 a.m., wake up at like 2 p.m., and then just work the whole day. Like, that's like my grind. If I want to enjoy life more, then I'll try and wake up earlier. Because to me, waking up early is more of a pleasure than it is anything else. Yeah, to me, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I think the internet has twisted it in the wrong way, or like the traditional schooling system has, because waking up early is amazing. I could wake up early, I could go outside, I could see people walking their dogs, I can talk to pretty girls. It's just like a great time, you yeah. know? But then at night, it's like no one's out. It's just me and my laptop, right? So nowadays, it's mostly night. I'm always grinding. But if I want some leisure, I'll go out in the morning, try and live that. Yeah, I've never really thought about that that way, that morning's like a, like a gift, kind of like a pleasure that you can have. Yeah, and I so. think it's very true. I like the morning like for certain things more than nighttime, mm -hmm. but we've typically learned that like, oh, you wake up and you start working and then yeah. at night you have free time, but you've kind of flip-flopped. I that. love the flip-flopping because, dude, the morning you wake up, you're outside. I, I live in Brickell, so I love the yeah. area. You got your coffee. Everyone's just smiling. Nice cars are going by. It's like this paradise, you know? It's like GTA 6. Literally. Right? <laughs> yeah. Are you a believer of treating life like a video game? Yeah, I think you can treat life like a video game and still play video games and still be rich. You know, I don't think you need to make this as, as serious as people say it needs to be. I, I treat my life like a video game, but financially as well, too. I think a lot of people penny pinch. They don't like to spend money. I think you should spend money because why else are you making it? You know, you spend yeah. it. Of course, don't be dumb and spend all your money. Yeah. But buy nice things, buy nice cars, buy nice watches, go on nice trips, spoil yourself. I am a firm believer that money out usually attracts money in. Yeah. Obviously, like you said, be financially smart. <laughs> Don't just, <laughs> I got 10000 in, let me go spend 10000 But I've told this to friends and family of like, hey, like it's good to spend money. You will get it back. The mm -hmm. universe brings it back to you. Mm -hmm. And it's happened to me countless amounts of times where it's like, I go on a big trip come back close a big deal in the first week that i came back and it's mm -hmm. like i don't think that's a coincidence i think mm -hmm. it's just money in usually attracts or money out usually attracts mm -hmm. money in 100 percent. you've been in this drop shipping space for five years if you listen to some of your videos mm -hmm. 
I know your age. You haven't announced it yet. But for you, what what were those five years like mm-hmm. now? Like, what, was there a success in year one and it's just been a straight up hockey stick from there? Mm-hmm. Was it kind of like in the middle that you really went from like that 10K a month everybody talks about to those 30, 40, 50K months? Mm-hmm. What was that part of your journey like? So when I stumbled across more broadly e-commerce, it was Amazon initially, and I failed on Amazon, right? And there was a period to where I wasn't necessarily doing much. So I wasn't like five years day in and day out doing it. There was a period where I was a little bit removed from it because it just wasn't working. When I stumbled across dropshipping, it took realistically, I would say around a year until it started to work like consistently profitably. And from that 10K month, the beautiful thing about the business model is it's easier to scale, right? I, I say to this day, to get to 10K a month, the agency is one of the best ways to do it, right? And I don't even teach people how to do agency. I've done it once in my life. I failed at it. I didn't like it. But I think with drop shipping, the beautiful thing about it was when I did my first 10K month, it only took a couple more months and now I'm at 30K a month, right? Because it's literally just spending more on ads to make more back. It's just pressing a couple buttons. There is literally no other business model where you can just press a couple buttons on your computer and just triple your, your monthly profit. That's the beautiful wand about it. The, the magic wand is a beautiful thing about the business model. Yeah, it's, for people that don't understand these ad networks like Meta, TikTok, uh, Google, you could think of it as a money printer. Yes. You figure it out and then you just hit play and money goes in and then a lot more money starts coming yeah. back out. Yeah. And you're right, like those businesses allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the person that's listening and is like, yeah, but I think drop shipping's a scam and like I don't have the money to just dump money on ads. Like what would be your response to the probably multiple people that look at that and think like here's another guru or here's another kid that got lucky? Yeah, no, it's it's a good question, man. And the thing is that I've tried to stop convincing myself of people to listen to me or even other successful people out there because I've realized that a lot of people, they have very strong opinions and no matter what you do or say or show, they will not change them, right? But for the the slight of people who are on the fence, like is this world of entrepreneurship, online entrepreneurship, dropshipping actually working or is it just another scam? The best advice I can give to them is what if it wasn't a scam? Would you take the chance? Because I did, right? I was skeptical initially. Everyone is skeptical initially. I'm sure you were too when you stumbled across like online, your online journey. And we had that thought, like what if it is real? I should at least try, right? And then from there, the rest is just history. Looking back now, you've been in the game for five years. You now manage a portfolio of brands. Are you able to say what the monthly is on those brands? Like how much are you bringing in from that? Yeah, 100%. We bring in for the last, I think, year and a half, we've been consistently doing over a million a month between all the brands. In the full portfolio. In the full portfolio. So like now it's a bit higher. This year has been a really good year, knock on wood. (laughs) It's been a good year. The team's been really strong. Everything's been going well. We've been getting closer to two to three million a month. I think our highest month this year was like 2.7 between all the brands. But right now it's typically like, it's like one to two. I always say over a million a month because like the fluctuations past a million a month can go up to three down to like barely touching a million, like right at a million. And are those all brands you own um, or are the manager of um, that you've started or is it brands that you've partnered with other people? Out of the whole uh, portfolio, we, we have one of them now that we're doing a partnership with, but the rest of them are all, you know, we, we started it, we found the product, a lot of it's custom manufacturing too. Most of the brands, how it works, and this is like some quick sauce, everyone watching, we literally take that drop shipping product, we scale it up, and we just change the product up a bit so it's unique, and then we build a brand out of it. It's drop shipping to e-com brand, like that's the formula. That was actually gonna be my follow-up was, yeah. are you, is this drop shipping to then prove a market and then build a, actual brand build a ip around it yeah 100 like, here, right, here's the thing and what i've seen in the online entrepreneur space the easiest way like i said earlier to make 10k just flat out is probably agency mm-hmm. but the easiest way to become a millionaire like an actual liquid cash millionaire i've always said and i will stick by this is drop shipping brand to e-com brand easiest way because it's you get parabolic scale you get exit value and it's quick, man. It's quick. Like if something can do 10K a month drop shipping, it will end up doing 100 plus K a month with the e-com brand. And why? Like what is that big delta, that difference mm-hmm. that 
Kirk goes from that 10K to 100K when you go towards the branded route? It's really just two things. And so it's, I'm so grateful that I can simplify it into two things. It's having a good branded offer. So it's not just selling this one product anymore. You're selling like, like for example, the Avant lighter, uh, which oh, well, there's no context here. But yeah. uh, like, for example, with this brand, I had electric lighters. Uh, the branded offer was like, it's, uh, it's an electric lighter. It's called the Avant lighter. So it's now its own thing. It's a branded yeah. offer. And then a high creative output. When you have an e-commerce brand, or the e-commerce brands in 2024 are just content powerhouses. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of creatives, a lot of commercials, as you will, behind that, and that allows you to scale. And that's, how, that's why it's really easy to get to 100K a month, you know, or even upwards of a million a month. You talked about that lighter brand, and that was your first big win. For anybody that doesn't know, that mm -hmm. was like one of your, your, your early stage Ws, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. But... You mentioned you've got this portfolio of brands. No, no, you're good. You've got this portfolio of brands that you manage, own, and you're doing upwards of a million dollars a month. I know we talked about it before the show. How old are you? I'm 20. 20 years old, doing over a million dollars a month. Yeah. And you've been in the industry for five years. Started when I was 14, 15, yeah. Dude, that is insane. Yeah, high school dropout. I did it right. <laughs> so you didn't even finish high school? No, dropped out of high school and when I dropped that I was making some money with e-com at the time too so yeah and I with all the other little ventures I had going on it was a ballsy move but it worked out at 20 years old managing all of this money and these brands like how have you gotten so mature how have you sped up that mm -hmm. maturity process because it's funny when you told me before we hit record I was like blown away because I was yeah. thinking at least three four five years older yeah you have uh, a, a good presence and a and a you, you come off very mature for a 20-year-old. Where does that come from? You know, it, it, it just comes from... Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Shit, you got Because I've never been asked that question before. Maturity comes from, I think, two main places. One, travel. And this is, this is a weird, oddball answer, uh, answer. But traveling around the world and just experiencing things on your own really does mature you as a person. I don't think you can read a book and become more mature. I think you just have to live life. Like, even though I'm young... I like to think I've lived a lot of lives already because mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of places. I've done a lot of things, taken a lot of risks. I've fell in love, fell out of love. I've done so much shit, right? Yeah. Um, and two, I, I have a, a, a decent upbringing. You know, my, my dad was, I had a really good dad, a really good mom. Um, you know, they, they really did raise me right, I would like, like to think. So, yeah, there's a good upbringing. And I, I'll add one more in there. I'm just a very curious person. So I spend a lot of time educating myself with YouTube, Always, you know, my brain just thinks a little bit different than most where I'm able to just pick things out of uh, the dirt, if you will, just going off YouTube, finding like little gold nuggets and just putting things together. And just years of doing that, I've been able to mature quickly. Have you ever been put in the situation? I know you've never publicly talked about your age and stuff, but has that brought any hurdles in the world of making big brand deals and business relations, has that ever been a problem? Not, not, not as much as you would think. I think a big thing is like you, when you once you build a brand for yourself, and you know you're not just a kid anymore. Then, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like uh, my results do speak for themselves, and like what we've done in the last three years in ecom has been like laughed like every other guru out there, right? So it's like that alone has really been enough. And then in like the private equity world, to where like if you want to raise funding for a brand, if you want to sell a brand, they don't care. Well, they, all they care about is the PL. Like, is yeah. the P? Are you green? Are you making money? All right, bet it's fine. We'll sell it. And they don't care. Like, oh, how old the founder is? Like, no one cares. Being in Miami, you're now in an area in a more dense area of younger entrepreneurs, hustlers. Like, you go around Brickell mm -hmm. and you can f bump into 30, 40, 20 to 25 year olds that are printing money. Mm -hmm. How much has being in Miami affected your success? Like, I've had people that have sat here that's like, I was making 20K a month, I moved to Miami. Eight months later, I was making 100K a month. Yeah. Did you have that kind of experience? Miami never was like a, like an amazing mover. Like, I, that's the Miami effect you're talking about. Yep. I've heard about that. Yep. It, it's a true thing. Anyone watching, Miami effect is real. It did help me uh, when I moved to Miami. After, pr prior to moving to Miami, I wasn't making as much as I am now. So, it, you could say that was because of Miami or just because of the natural progression of the businesses. It's either or. But being around other people who are doing well is a huge, huge thing. It's hard to find other young guys crushing it. 
you know, anywhere in the world. There's only two cities where you can, Miami and Dubai. Everywhere else, it's extremely rare because we're like a point zero 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 one yeah. of like the whole population, right? So being able to like go to a hookah spot or go to a dinner and see other guys who are doing better than you is something that I think has been a huge driver for me. And you mentioned being around these people. A controversial topic for some people is like how much people buy courses and invest in themselves and I'm an advocate for people to do it and mm -hmm. I know most people that sit here say the same are you one of those people that is a huge advocate for mentorship having mentors paid mentorships that whole realm a hundred percent I don't want to sound like a like another uh, just just like any other guru yeah. but there there's a reason why every guru says like you should invest in yourself because you've only been educated well I'm speaking to the people out there you've only yeah. been educated from what the traditional system has taught you that is like school reading blah 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 right so for you to invest in your own education take matters into your own hand is the smartest thing you can do like i have so many coaches so many mentors so many courses until i actually started to make money i'm, I'm still to this day actively in, investing in more so consultants and people just to mentor me in other avenues of my business one i love that and that's on par and it's mm -hmm. funny you would think that some of my viewers would get it at this point like <laughs> you're like this this is like the same answer from every person yeah. go spend money on yourself it's yeah. one of the biggest rois you'll ever have i want to go back to the portfolio of brands and mm -hmm. dive into a little bit of the nitty-gritty stuff mm -hmm. people that are listening are probably thinking what is it like to build the team around these brands what does the day-to-day -day as an operator look like from you? Can you just bring us into you as the operator and kind of owner of all these brands and what it looks like and what you've learned? 100%, man. So let's let's think about... I can actually show you one of the brands here, too. Yeah, let's see it. I'll show you the... Do you want to see the revenue or do you want to see, like, uh, uh, like uh, the store itself? But you, we can't show the store on... Uh, yeah, let's see the revenue. Let's show them the revenue and I'll, yeah. I'll look at the store off camera. <laughs> okay, so this is the revenue. Yesterday, it did $28,000. 28000 yesterday. Yeah. Jesus. So, like, which camera should I Yeah, we could. This one will pick it up. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully it picks it up. Yeah, that's crazy. And then if we go last 90 days on this brand, so last two months, it's been $2.7 million. $2.7 million. That is insane. So this brand, I'll talk about this brand a little bit. So this is a bit of a newer brand. The... The nitty gritty on this brand is it's a supplement brand, right? But it's actually drop shipping supplements, which is no one has ever talked about that before. It's like a new thing. But at the end of the day, it's like new things is what makes people rich, right? So yeah. the team, a lot of this team is we're a lot of creative, right? So like I said earlier, an e-commerce brand is a powerhouse of content. So we have editors, UGC creators. So these are essentially people just holding their phone, making videos with the product. We have VAs that do like outreach to influencers and, uh, more UGC creators, a lot of it's just content, and then a creative strategist as well. Uh, the funny thing is, anything, and this is gonna, anyone who's doing ecom watching this, they're gonna fucking love this. If you need to hire for anything creative related, which is like 99% of the business, you know where you go? Twitter. Twitter. Literally just Twitter. Twitter. It's that easy. Just make a tweet and you'll find people. You don't need it's to. It's crazy. Do, it's crazy. Like we we out of like all my employees, I would say like uh, a majority of them are from Twitter. Dude, I love that you shared that because yeah. I just I've hired tons of people from Twitter and mm -hmm. I literally tweeted two days ago. Need a long form editor for Beyond the Wealth? Hit me up. I got fourteen applicants. Already hired one person. Easy. Didn't do anything. Yeah. And I don't have. I have like two thousand followers on Twitter. Yeah. People think hiring is this like super like Fortune five hundred company like process of like resumes and this and sitting down. No, no, no. Tweet. Okay, great. Hire. That's that's how easy it is, right? So yeah, with that brand in particular, the reason I mention it's a supplement brand as well is because one thing that we're working on a lot is R&D of new supplements. Over the years, one thing that I have that a lot of people else out there don't have is really good supplier relationships. So I can, from China, custom make and source supplements. From the US, I can do it. Even from India as well, we're messing around with that. So we're, we have an R&D guy we hired to start looking into new supplements to make and just basically innovating on the product. So you mentioned that you have these good relationships. How did you go about getting them? It's just years of working with the same people, right? And then this is the best part, investing in myself. A lot of the courses, communities, and mentors I had before introed me to people that have genuinely 10x my business. Like, for example, my supplier I got through um, like a guru like a couple of years back, and then I developed a really good relationship with the supplier. And as I was growing, 
they were growing as well. And that's why I go to China a lot to see them and whatnot. But for example, with my specific supplier, they not only help me custom make stuff, they don't only help me with that, but they also help me with credit lines. Yeah. So like if I want to bring in U.S. inventory, they'll front like 500, 600K. And my business, my P&Ls are ex- insanely green because of that, right? So that's something that you can't just get off watching a YouTube video, right? And that's one of the things I give people when I mentor them as well is like, yeah, first things first, you need these. You know, yeah. you need the Facebook ad account connections. You need the TikTok ad account connections. You need a supplier. You need the Shopify reps. You need all of it. It's very important. Is the whole industry pretty gatekept from the perspective of like if you don't have a lot of those things? Like if you don't have the meta rep, the TikTok rep, the Shopify rep, Mm -hmm. you are a little bit handcuffed. Is that true? You know, the thing about the industry, especially the e-com industry, is what people see as the front facing industry are those are just info product guys. Those guys just sell a course. The people behind it who actually make money with the space, yes, they do not have a personal brand. You would see this person walking down the the street. You wouldn't even tell that they make over five million a month profit off their brand. I would meet people uh, because I just got back from an event in New York. They're just guys there that average guys don't even wear a watch. They're just normal guys. No, like they just have a Twitter like a hundred followers. They don't even they're not even an Instagram, you know. And they're doing six seven million a month with their ecom brands. So it it just opens your eyes to there is a whole world behind it. And that was the main, main, main reason why I got into starting my personal brand is because I wanted to be the bridge between what people think is real e-com and what a real e-com actually is. Yeah, let's talk about your personal brand. You've Mm -hmm. now started to make it a point to post a lot on social media. Mm -hmm. You're talking about your successes. I mean, I'm following you. I know you bought a Lambo yesterday or a day before. Congratulations on that. What has it been like kind of jumping into that content journey? You know, it's uh, it's fun, man. It's fun. There, there, there's definitely no, uh, like, I'm not the type of person to get shy on camera. I enjoy talking on camera. I enjoy building a personal brand. I've gotten recognized here and there before, too, which is it's honestly surreal. It's like, yeah. you know me? <laughs> like, are you sure? So it, it's fun, bro. It's been a fun journey. One thing I've noticed, too, is as I have grow my personal brand, I start networking with other people who are also growing their personal brand, and I've noticed a lot of these guys don't do the business model they preach. You know, that's just the name of the game. It's like, oh, you failed at the business model. Now you're selling a course. And I get it. That's why majority of the people who watch content like this are skeptical because the majority of the people who do have a course are not legit. Yeah, something that I always tell the viewers, because we do, I've had a bunch of people from the info space on, and mm-hmm. I always say, if the person that is selling you the course is not actively practicing what they are talking about, I would not work with them. Mm-hmm. Because if they were actually practicing and still in the industry, it would show that it's still profitable and there's still money to be made. Mm-hmm. Them being completely removed but selling you on how to get in, in my opinion, is a red flag. Oh, huge red flag. Huge red flag. And there's a lot of guys out there <laughs> that do it. These information... Info does make money. Yeah. You know, it is a great business and it can be done very well. You know, you can help a lot of people. Like I look at info products like Luke Balmore's Capital Club and I think that's amazing because he's helping people, he's connecting people. It's great. You can do it right, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. But here's the caveat. If you compare every info product out there to the schooling system, it still beats it. Because the schooling system sucks, bro. That's how I look at info. A lot of people look, look at it in comparison to like, oh, I bought a course and it didn't make me rich. Well, that course taught you something that you would not have learned at schooling, right? Yep. So it's still worth it. I actually am a firm believer that there will, like, we will get there. I'm 25, you're 20, we're pretty mm-hmm. close. Um, I, I do think that we will get to see and raise our kids potentially or at least at a bare minimum, our kids' kids, there will be a massive change in the schooling system. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that, one, our generation understands that it's a little bit of a scam. Yeah. Or kind of a lot of bit of a scam. And we know that there's all these resources online like YouTube Mm -hmm. that you can go and learn all these high leverage skills. Even now, the new trend is going to trade school again. That's like a new cool thing. Because people, you can go be a plumber and make half a million dollars a year Mm -hmm. and work on your own schedule like you can do that but we got so far removed from that so i i'm curious like you dropped out of high school what are your opinions on the schooling system Mm -hmm. and do you think that everybody should go through do you think schools for some people do you Mm -hmm. think nobody should go through like what do you feel about it i definitely think schools for some people some people are just not meant not cut out for the entrepreneurship life because you you it's, it's a different life you live but what I will say is, is I 110% agree with what you say. Our kids' kids, or even our own kids, 
will be attending like different types of institutions, right? Yep. That's actually one of the long-term plays for our info. What we're doing in info right now is to eventually stem into a somewhat of an institution in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. For me to get into education, there was really no reason for me to do it because I'm already making a shit ton of money with e-com. Yeah. It's more of the long-term version to help people and actually build something that's like, wow, that's that could change the world, you know? I think there will be a lot of institutions in the next couple decades to where we might be sending our kids to Capital Club, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think that yeah. there is a very viable future that, that does actually happen. Mm -hmm. And, like, you get to go in and learn. And I, I saw something. Like, I've seen some professors and schools starting to get better and offer more of these creative classes. Mm -hmm. I think there was a marketing professor that you walked into the class and there was one assignment for the whole year. And it was, like, get 1 million views in four months and you get an A+. Plus. Mm. Get 500,000 views in three months and you get an A-. Minus, and get anything over 100,000 views in three months and you pass this class. Go. Yeah. It could be on anything. Yeah. And to me, I was like, that's so genius. Like, yeah. that's a real skill that mm -hmm. if you learn how to create content that goes viral, that is a super marketable and super useful skill. Mm -hmm. Not the old stuff where I'm on a stupid computer playing some simulation, yeah. running a bike shop or something dumb. I had to do that in college <laughs> where you had to run a fake bike shop. Yeah. Like, makes no sense. But I, I think, <laughs> kind of got a little out of control there. <laughs> But I do think that we will see the opportunity where there will be other ways to educate the youth and mm -hmm. there's actually going to be more value in what you learn. Because, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I don't do any algebra or college <laughs> algebra anymore, but that was really important when I was in college. So yeah. let's see. Let's go away. We've been talking so much about business here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with hustle and with the grind and with the building of these successful businesses comes the ability to have fun. Mm -hmm. What You've mentioned travel. And I want to dive into that because I'm a huge advocate for travel. But what are some of the fun things that you like to do with the money you have coming in? You know, travel has got to be at the top. For me, like money coming in, you said something good earlier. And that was, uh, I think you give and you get or what you put out, you yep. get back. That's really, that's really key, especially when it comes to charity as well. I'm a big charity guy. Like we've been building schools for the last couple of years. Less fortunate countries, obviously not in America. Yeah. That's don't like the schooling system here, but yeah, less fortunate countries, a lot of charity, a lot of giving back. That's been a huge part of my journey. And that's like, that's one side of it. Now on the fun side of things, definitely travel, love to travel around, see different places. To me, waking up in a new country, that feeling you get trumps having a nice watch car, whatever it is. That feeling is, is really good. Traveling with your friends is a big one too, especially if you're friends with someone who does the same thing as you and you guys can travel and like, run your Shopify stores together while traveling the world, that's honestly un unbelievable, it's such a good feeling, right? That's been that. I do have a nice car, nice watch, nice place. That all kind of comes as you grow. Girls is, is great too, you know, having, spoiling girls is fun, but it can, it can become too much sometimes. <laughs> you gotta be careful with that one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's really it. So you, we talked a lot about travel and you just went into it there. I've said multiple times on other episodes that I'm so thankful for my parents that showed me, hey, you've got to go see the world. Like mm -hmm. every vacation we had, we tried to go and see new places. And then right when me and my brother turned 18, it was like, get your ass out there mm -hmm. and fly here with your friends or fly there. If yeah. you have the money, if you can hustle and go pay for it, go, go. Yeah. And I know a lot of kids who haven't left the United States or mm -hmm. haven't gotten a chance to go to Europe. And for me, that blows my mind because what we talked about at the beginning, you become so much more mature when you can understand different cultures and see different ways of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it is so important for younger people that are listening to go and get out there, like go take that trip. Mm -hmm. Like we're too young to be like, oh no, man, I can't take that trip. I have six thousand dollars in my bank account it's going to be a little risky dude who gives a shit just go and have fun like yeah. we're young so what are your favorite places that you've gotten to travel to man there's a lot of places on this planet that i love but <laughs> mexico has been at the top i i've been all over the place but mexico for some reason there's something in the air there that's bro. interesting always had a good time it's super close to miami yeah. too you know i might be going next week just just to reminisce a little bit but yeah mexico is always good i love tulum it's a good place uh, Bali is a really good spot as well. Bali is always a go to. Dubai has been always good for business. Uh, Colombia is good for anyone who's watching this who's starting to make some money online that wants to be in a place to where they can have good accessibility. Medellin, Colombia, 
hands down. You're going to have a great time there. Very beautiful women as well. Where else is good? Um, Europe is good. I mean, I think Europe is a bit overhyped. Yeah. People overhype Europe a bit. Like, like South France and like Monaco and all these places are just overhyped. Spain is great, though. Barcelona. I love Spain. I love Barcelona. Love it. Yeah, yeah, I took my mom there, I think, about a year ago. We had a really good time. It was, a, it was, it was good fun. Yeah, it's been around. I just came back from Colombia like a month ago. Oh, I nice. loved it. I went to Cartagena. That was Cartagena. my first time I going to Colombia. It was, it was beautiful. It was amazing. Yeah. Spain also, it's like top three for me. Yeah. I love the vibes, like the people. It's cheap as hell, and it's actually really nice. You know what? I think I think people need to be able to have an opinion on where they like in the world. I think that's so important. Like what we were talking about earlier, it matures you, and then you can become your own person. People, I feel like people who are just in one spot their whole life, they're not able to have an opinion of the world. Like you can say, oh, I love this place, I love that, because you've been around, and that's a blessing, right? Yep. I think people need that, because that gives you character, right? 100%. I think that's spot on, and you need perspective in life. Like yeah. you can't fully i don't think that you can fully understand things without perspective mm -hmm. like you can say that you don't like europe and that but if you've never been there you don't know mm -hmm. like you're just going with what you've heard from other people yeah and for me i think that it's so important and again for people to just get out there and travel and see the world mm -hmm. because you'll learn so much you'll learn what you like and don't like what mm -hmm. you think is cool and what you thought don't think is cool yeah things that you never thought would be cool and now mm -hmm. you love it so yeah. Like, kind of just bringing all of this together here, like, you're 20, you've had all of these experiences, five years in the space, have brands, have portfolio brands doing over a million dollars a month, like, how, how does it feel? Like, what do you feel like on a day-to-day? -day? Like, is there a lot of pressure? Is there a lot of stress? No. Um, because I, people, I mean, I'm curious. I'm sure the people listening are curious, too. Mm. The pressure is there, and the stress is there, too, but... To be honest, it's, it, it feels like a normal life to me, right? Like when I wake up and I'm just fixing things in the business and I'm going down to get coffee and I see a friend, I talk to him and then I'm thinking about this girl. Like I'm a normal guy, yeah. you know? I think a lot of people remove that from, think that I'm removed from normal life, whereas I just do different things. I'm a normal person who just does different things. And the beautiful thing about my story is I grew up mediocre. I'm pretty much a mediocre person. I don't have that crazy 5 a.m. plunge work <laughs> ethic. Um, I don't, uh, I'm, I, I'm not like most gurus. Like a lot of gurus like are really into like old money and all that. Shout out Iman, crazy cool guy. But yeah. uh, I'm not into that at all. Um, a lot of people say you can never play video games. I love playing video games. I don't play it a lot, but like I, I'll, I'll whoop you at UFC. I mean, if you got it, I'll whoop you at it. I'm good at that one. But yeah, I, I'm, a normal, I'm a normal guy, bro. And that, I think that that's the thing. It's like I just do different things for work. Like I just, my work days are just different things than what a normal person's work day is, right? And I most importantly compound it over time. The main feeling I get a lot is gratitude that I stuck with the plan, right? Uh, for example, having the Lamborghini, it's fun to drive, but the fun, the, the main component of having Lamborghini is a constant reminder that you stuck with the plan even when it wasn't working. So I do get that feeling a lot throughout my days of like, oh, I'm so grateful that I stuck with it. Because if I didn't stick with it and maybe I tried this business model, I went back to school, or I did that, I would never be here, yep. right? And that kind of gives me fuel to keep working. But yeah, I mean, I'm just a normal person. I have to get motivation from certain areas too. Like I have to try and motiv motivate myself sometimes. A lot of the times I don't want to work. Sometimes I just want to watch a movie. It's just, I'm a normal person, you know? Most people that are probably still here with us listening are here for e-com sauce, and they want to know yeah. like, what you're doing. If you had to spit two minutes or a minute of e-com sauce for the people listening that have made it this far, yeah. what advice could you give to them? And they want a little freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Okay, so two minutes of sauce. This is going to be more than like a 10-hour of courses, but first things first, um, don't do organic. TikTok organic is the biggest scam out there. People who say TikTok organic works, like you can just make videos of the product and just sell it, are just selling you a course. It does not work. TikTok ads versus Facebook ads. Facebook ads will always be king. You, it's always it's been like this since the dawn of time. And you talk to any of the OG uh, ecom guys, they'll laugh at you when you say you spend more on TikTok than Facebook. Facebook ads are king. When it comes to your store, your product page matters the most. Your homepage does not matter. There's been times before where we scaled the store to over a million dollars and we had a, no image on our homepage, which is blanked out because you're driving all your traffic to your product page. Pick products that are a shortcut. Do not sell lamps and shit like that. It's not going to work. You want to you sell products that not only solve a problem, but 
also provide um, some sort of wow factor. And that happens to be a shortcut if you think about it logically. So like serums are really good, right? Like therapy products, weight loss products, anything that sells a shortcut. Facebook ads, key to making money with Facebook ads is two things. One, having good account structure. You can't just run ads, and it's the most complicated part of the whole business model. You can't just run ads off of your own profile. You have to use what we call like bot assets. So there's like vendors out there to where you can buy like a Facebook profile, a Facebook business manager, a Facebook ad account, and you set it up on a proxy. It's this whole process, but that's, that's very key. We help people with that as well because it's, it's very hard to set up. Creative, creative volume is key. If you're testing products, if you, say, if you test five creatives for product, you will never find a winner. And you need to test at least 15 to 25 creatives for product. So creatives are everything. Like in 2024, being able to use CapCut is way more like monetized than being able to use Facebook Ads Manager. Our ad strategies are as simple as just running broad campaigns, like $50 broad, like we don't really target at all. It's just launch it, if it works, it works, if it doesn't cut it, right? So creatives is, is everything, because all the targeting in 2024 is done on the creative level. If you wanna target fat white people, then you're gonna have a fight white, white person in your ad. If you wanna target black people, black people in your ads. It's just the name of the game. How to get creatives is you, not, you need to know how to rip, right? So at the beginning, you're not getting your own content, you're ripping it, so you're gonna rip as much as you can from TikTok. There's an art to ripping, so don't neglect it. People think you can just rip a video and launch it and that's your ad. Sometimes you're gonna need to edit it. The example I give is a couple years back, we were running a sweatwear brand and we had like a sweatsuit. And we had this one ad of just a girl talking about the sweatsuit, how it's great, and it didn't work. But then we went on TikTok and we found a random viral video of a girl who finished her, her run and just crunched up her, her shirt and a bunch of sweat came out. This is a random viral video, had nothing to do with the product. We just took three seconds of that video, used it as a hook to the video we had before, and boom, now it's working. So you need to get in that creative mindset. And if you're not a creative person, become one, because I wasn't, and you, you can work on it. Like you, it's not, you're not born to lose, like you can work on it. And last but not least is you can build a multi-million dollar brand without a single returning customer. The biggest misconception in e-commerce is that you need to have the best product in the world so people come back. No, you just need a really good marketing system and look at your product as more so of a vehicle to bringing people in so you can get the money, right? The product is just a vehicle for your ads. So for example, if you're selling serums, you can market it in so many different ways. It's just a vehicle for your ads. Yeah. God damn. Dude, we don't charge you guys for any of this. This is completely free. You could do me a favor and subscribe, and you could do him a favor and follow him on all socials. But, dude, that was an absolute truth bomb right there. And like you said, that's better, more, than, like, that's better than what 10 hours and five grand worth of courses is probably going to give you. Yeah. Uh, it took years to be able to just spill all that out. But I, I, that's why I have a personal brand. I love to do that, bro, because I know some kid is watching this, and he's probably in school or something where he's got one AirPod in, and he's like, oh, shit, taking the notes, yeah. and then he's going to do it, and it's going to work. And he's like, god damn, this is crazy. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's surreal. Dude, I love it. I ask the same question at the end of all my interviews, and it's really simple. What has to happen in the next 10 years for you to think you really succeeded? Mm, that's a good one. The next 10 years, so that's going to be, wow. 2034 shit bro all right next 10 years i would definitely have to had exit exited for at least eight figure amount i haven't exited for eight figures before so eight or even nine shoot for the stars right but at least exit for eight figures one of the e-com brands at least educate a hundred thousand people you know i want to i want to try and like when i say educate like actually educate like not like some bs discord community like actually educate 100k people uh, around there and then in terms of life dude it's hard to tell because i'm not one to set goals i actually never set goals and i'm actually anti-goal okay. i think having goals is limiting yourself i think you should have input goals not output goals i'll explain that in a bit because it's, yeah. it's actually a big mover but if i had to say i'm going to build at least 50 schools right now we're at like 11 12 i'm going to build at least 50 exit for eight figures educate 100 plus k people and just keep living. I mean, that's the thing. Just keep enjoying every day. I mean, my main thing is if, if I'm happy, I'm happy. And that's all that matters, right? Dude, one, I, I love asking that question because hopefully the show will be around in 10 years and I can interview you again yeah. and hold you to all these, uh, these, let's not call them goals because we're about to talk about that. Yeah. But we can go back and look at this and say, hey, I did achieve all these. I blew them out of the water. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you just mentioned that you're not a big goal person, yeah. and you think you should set input goals, not output goals. Yeah. Explain that. So g- goals, a lot of the times, can do two things. One, it can cap a person, and the second thing is to it can create it creates a false dopamine. A lot of times, when I can sit here and be like, I'm gonna do this, 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 and I don't do any of them, but I still got some dopamine from saying it. So that's an output goal. What an input goal is is like for the next three months, I'm gonna work 12 hours a day. I'm gonna eat five meals a day and work out twice a day, like doing something like that, because that's what you can really control, right? One thing, a little cheat code that I do, and I tell this to a lot of people, and it frustrates me so much because when I tell someone to do it, they don't do it. And I was like, dude, this is one of the main things that I did, and I still do to this day. It's a small habit that's helped a lot, and that is I track my working hours. Every time I load into my laptop or computer, I go on Google stopwatch. I just press the stopwatch, and I'll just work. When I, even if I have to take a piss, I'll turn it off, come back, turn it back on. Just by tracking your working hours, you start to see how, how hungry actually are you. How much are you actually working? Some people will claim, I work 13 hours a day, 12 hours a day. But if you track it, I guarantee you it's not going to be 12, 13. It's probably going to be like five, you know? So tracking your deep work hours and then saying every day, I'm going to work eight hours. I'm not going to stop until this stopwatch is eight. If you guys do that, trust me, you're going to get way farther than if you didn't. I still do it to this day. Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show and dropping all this free knowledge for everybody. Uh, I'm sure so many people are going to get a ton of value from it. I want to make sure anybody that's listening can go and find you. Mm -hmm. All of your socials will be in the description below. But for the lazy people that don't want to open it, where's the best place for them to follow you and Mm -hmm. kind of stay in touch with what you're doing? Yeah, man, just Instagram, Samir Ear, S-A-A-M-I-R-I-R. It's, all, it's that on all channels, too, so it's pretty easy. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. And I know you post YouTube as well, so I'll make sure to have that link below. Yeah. But, dude, again, thank you so much. It's Thanks a pleasure meeting me. you. And I hope everybody loved this episode and gets a ton of value. Awesome, bro. Thank you.